Even though the Silicon Valley Bank has crashed, Credit Suisse is in trouble, some other banks are in trouble, and now you have uh, over 30 trillion in national debt. Still, the United States ruling class is um, still in control and they can decide how big of a crash is happening and uh, they will always maintain their basic stability and their basic empire. This is very, very important to understand. So um, right now it doesn't look like 2008 and uh, 2008 even wasn't a real threat to the system. The system has accumulated so much money. Popular hedge funds, they are uh, they have trillions of dollars and uh, the mega banks, they are um, they're moving such amounts of money. And then, of course, you have um, Arabic countries and, and their money um, and they can always, always um, be they can always be used to stabilize something. Um, so that is something you have to remember. There have been quite a few doomsday prophets and they always claim that the big crash is happening in, in a few months or in a year or two years. And uh, some of them, they just look at the numbers and they, they don't quite expect that coherence in the United States ruling class. Or sometimes these doomsday prophets, they just... Um, they're they're making money because of shock value. So the more shocking they sound, the more people are interested in their content. Or sometimes you even get ideological um, reasons for that uh, for those doomsday predictions. So some of these uh, pro doomsday prophets they um, they want to believe that the United States empire is in decline and that Russia is um, is is the rising star and China is the rising star, but. If you really look at this thing, the United States still is the dominating power on Earth. And uh, the Eastern Bloc has, has many, many, many problems. So don't be fooled. When there is a banking crash, when there is a crisis, and they're using taxpayer money to fix it, like in 2008, um, there never really is a true threat to the ruling class. They claim there is, and they can sort of argue that if, you know, banks are not saved by taxpayer money, everything will collapse. And there's some truth to that on some level, but there really is not an existential threat because the system is so corrupt and the system is so wrong in many ways. So um, when, when these kind of things happen, they can just scare everybody into these measures but now it's just the silicon valley bank and it's just a weak phase of uh, credit suisse so that's not even that's not even a big issue the united states ruling class stays in control and um so uh, big players early uh left silicon valley bank and that's what basically caused the crash so founders fund of peter thiel advised uh, all of these uh, uh, these corporations to move their money out of Silicon Valley Bank. Sequoia followed, A16Z followed, and uh, that was basically it. And um, the central bank basically had to know about this because they had the oversight. And the central bank uh, shouted from the rooftops that the um, that things were going to change, you know, the, the the bank interest rates, central bank rates were going to change. And so the model of Silicon Valley Bank was unsustainable, but they still kept maintaining this business model. So um, things went on as usual. And of course, that had to collapse. And now people and corporations, they're moving their money to mega banks such as JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Citigroup and Wells Fargo. So these super large banks, they become even larger, they can absorb that business lost by Silicon Valley Bank. Now, some people argued um, Silicon Valley could have saved itself in the last moment, they should have just gone to uh, Arabic countries and uh, raised a few billion of fresh capital. And um, and uh, they should have given them a few percent of the bank in return in ownership, but that didn't happen. So now SVB is going to be split up and sold and the mega banks are getting bigger. And now the Swiss bank, Credit Suisse, uh, they are in trouble, but they're being saved. The uh, uh, central bank of Switzerland is pumping $54 billion 
into Credit Suisse. Now, originally, Credit Suisse tried to compete with the American banks and they tried to uh, take some of their business, but that's not going to happen now. So again, the U.S. empire is dominating um, is dominating banking. So the um, uh, the Swiss authorities are now saying that Credit Suisse is fine; that there's nothing to worry about. You know, the liquidity is is okay, and uh, even the Saudis were involved in Credit Suisse. Uh, they had nine point nine percent, and they declared they were not going to help Credit Suisse anymore and that's scared of investors but then the Saudis said we have this rule we can't go um we can't go we can't go to 10 percent, and we can't go any higher than that so that was basically the only reason now um the whole banking sector is is over leveraged of course there's um, way too much credit card debt and there's way too much real estate problem problematic debt and uh, so these systemic problems, they still persist to this day. So the stuff that caused 2008 to happen, that still persists today. And uh, we see this political blame game. Um, for example, the Democrats are blaming the Trump administration for uh, loosening the banking regulations. And uh, Republicans are... Uh, Republicans are uh, counterclaiming that the Democrats spent too much money with the COVID uh, stimulus fund. So it's like spending uh, trillions of dollars. So that's what always happens. You know, there's there's an, there's an operation like saving the system and of course um, fleecing the average person. There's always an operation, but there's always an information operation that goes along with that. So it's this politicized blame game so people can't really solve this issue. They can't really understand what's going on. They don't understand that the United States ruling class is very, very coherent. It's not split into a left and right block. They're not, they don't try, really try to destroy each other. It's a system that has worked for a very, very, very long time. Now, if you think about it, the Saudis, other Arabic countries, the big hedge funds, the mega banks, they are moving trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. So when there's, when there's an acute crisis... You can usually solve that crisis by just pumping in maybe uh, 50 billion, 100 billion back into the system, of course, with guarantees. Then you put in taxpayer money and then you fleece the average taxpayer again. And that's how the system continues. They will scare you every single time. They will claim that if we don't do this, everything's going to collapse. And of course, on, on a certain level, it would collapse and you have to prevent that but the, the the question is of how you prevent this to happen do you prolong these problems do you actually keep the system going the way it is or do you actually start fundamentally changing things it was a very interesting moment during the presidential uh, campaign of uh, donald trump when he was going against hillary clinton in the televised debates and uh, he was going for the maximum effect of his of his attacks and so he said that he was getting the same tax breaks as those corporations and those people who were funding hillary so he was really really trying to get that um to get that effect with the audience and of course that succeeded but um at the end of the day nothing fundamentally changed during the trump administration either so um it's it's still a bunch of mega banks remember uh, the uh, Treasury Secretary, Financial uh, Secretary uh, Stephen Mnuchin, he was a member of Skull and Bones. He was very well connected. The Trump admin was almost like a Bush admin. It was full of Council on Foreign Relations people and insiders and that sort of thing. Um, it was almost like a Jeb Bush administration, but without the crazy tweets and some of the um, you know pointless scandals of uh, of Donald Trump. Had we seen a Hillary administration, things would have moved on just the same. Now, if you get a Republican president uh, next, for example, Ron DeSantis, he's going to be a team player. He's going to do exactly what other presidents have done before him. Okay, so uh, you have to be very, very smart about your financial decisions. And you have to be very, very careful with these smaller banks or banks that are not... Um, 
they're not part of these this elite gang of um, of super banks of mega banks. You have to be really really in tune to good news sources to uh, figure out when to move your money out early. Now this has actually happened with the Silicon Valley Bank. People figured out months ago that this business model was not sustainable and that this bank was going to be in trouble. And that's when the smart guys actually moved their money out. Yeah, people like Peter Thiel. And so um, <laughs> once they had moved their money out, um, all these other companies that still had their money at uh, Silicon Valley Bank, all these other investors, they were late to the game. And so uh, they got into a lot of problems. So don't listen to the wrong type of uh, financial influencers be very very in tune uh, to reality and uh, move your money out if if you get the sense that um, a bank is going to fail <laughs>